Good morning. How are you guys doing? Can you guys hear me in the back? Can you hear me and everybody hear me? How are you guys doing this morning? You look amazing. Let me see everybody's teeth. Smile, smile, smile. Everybody smile. I'm collecting smiles today. Where are we at? Smile. All right. All right. Well, good. Thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege and an honor to be standing here before you. Why are we here? We're here to learn. What are we here to learn? Media. Why are you here in the, in the black hoodie? Because somebody made you come? I know. Somebody made me come, too. And, sir, how about you? All right, you brought your students. Give it up for the teachers and the mentors that brought their students and mentees. Uh, let me pick one more person in the back in the red jacket. How come you're here? Oh, I love it. The word inspiration. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my name is Thomas Williams. I am from Vacaville, California. Does anybody know where Vacaville is? Right down the road, 707. 707. So before we get started, I want to get the energy going, and I'm going to need your help because the energy that I give is the same energy that you give me back. So is anybody, is anybody okay with being average? Raise your hand if you want to be great. All right, let's start it off by being great early. All right, so I'm going to say give me one clap, and then I need one clap. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. And I'm going to say give me two claps, I need two claps. I'm going to say give me three claps, and I need three claps, and on the third clap, I need one of those Ric Flairs. Do you know who Ric Flair is? Ric Flair makes the noise, woo! So I'm going to say give me one clap, two claps, three claps, and on the third clap, I need a woo. All right? Okay, let's do a practice. All right, everybody put your pens and your papers down. Put them down. All right, give me one clap, give me two claps, give me three claps. Oh, that was a good first one. That was a good first one. Can we do it again, though? All right, let's go. And I want to hear you all the way in the back. You in the green sweat, I want to hear you, too. Give me one clap. Give me two claps. Give me three claps. Oh, yes. Okay, now we're here. Now we're ready. Now we're ready. So what I want to talk to you guys about today is never giving up. Never quit, never give up. Because we come into life, we come into this session, we come into this conference with so much energy and we're excited, but something happens. Something happens and we get a little bit frustrated. Maybe we get a little discouraged. I want to start off with the story I'm flying from, because I live in LA, and so I'm flying from LA all the way here two days ago. And right as I get down in my seat, I put my seatbelt on, so everybody take your right hand, take your right hand right here like this, and act like you're getting ready to lock into your seatbelt now. Lock it in. You can make the noise, too. Click. 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 All right. All right. I don't know. Wait a minute. I don't know if you put your seatbelt on. Did you put your seatbelt on? Okay, you put your seatbelt on. My bad. My bad. All right. So I plug in, and I'm locking my seatbelt in, and the captain comes over the intercom, and he's like, listen, we're going to fly up to Northern California. It's going to be a 58-minute ride. And so I'm like, cool, I can get a 20-minute nap. And he's like, but probably about the last 30 minutes, there's going to be a lot of turbulence because there's a whole bunch of wind in Northern California, so there's going to be some turbulence. So before we get ready to land, it's going to get a little bumpy. So everybody say, never quit. Because, now listen, listen, because as sooner we understand that we can never quit, the sooner we can move on and we can get, make the final destination and we can make the landing. So I'm, I'm on the airplane and I'm flying, I'm flying, and they come by with the peanuts and the pretzels and they're like, do you want some? I'm like, yeah, I want some, I want two, I want three. So then I take a whole bunch of the pretzels and I'm eating, and then all of a sudden he says, Flight attendants, take your seats. And I'm like, flight attendants, take your seats? Like, no, usually they walk around, they tell everybody else, the passengers to take their seats, but this time it must be getting really bumpy. And that's why I told you guys to lock in, because when it gets really bumpy, sometimes you have to lock in. And the captain comes over and he says, all right, now we're getting ready to make the final landing, and now we're just like rocking like this. And I'm scared, I don't ride roller coasters, right? I don't like roller coasters, and I hate turbulence, and I'm just bumping around, bumping around, bumping around like this. And then finally, to we're about 1,000 feet above the ground, it smoothens out. And then we make a nice, lang nice landing, and everybody claps, and everybody cheers, and everybody's excited, because we're, at the end of the day, the only thing we need to do is we want to get there safely. And the only thing I'm trying to tell you guys today is that when you get, make up your mind of what you want to do and what you want to become, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard. 
A lot of times it's going to be turbulent. And you're going to be just like on that airplane where they're going to tell you to sit down. They're going to tell you to buckle up. And you're like, you know what, man? Matter of fact, let me just, let me just not even get on the airplane. Let me not go up there because if I go up there and the plane's moving around, the plane's bumping around, it's not even worth it to get there. So now I want to get into the real story because I want to tell you guys how I became a professional football player, the first person in my immediate family to graduate college, and live in the life of my dreams. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me get down here. Do you guys, do you guys mind? Do you guys mind if I get down here and get a little bit closer? Get a little closer because I, li I like to see the see, see my friends. So give me two seconds. So, in 2003, I graduated from Vacaville High School. Vacaville High School, starting varsity football player. My dream ever since I was seven years old was to play in the National Football League. It's to be a professional athlete, but I became a football player right around the time I went to high school. And so going into my senior year, I was like, the top 50 player in the United States. I was the top 20 player in the state of California. And I was on my way. The picture on the left is when I was in high school. The picture on the right is at an All-American game. I'm 17, 18 years old at the time, and I'm so close to my dream. Do you know what you want to be when you grow up? Yes, you do. I think you do. I think you do. Because my thing I wanted to do is I wanted to play professional sports. But again, remember we talked about the turbulence. The closer you get to something, sometimes the more difficult it becomes. So I get a scholarship and I go to USC. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm one step away from playing professional football. And I get to USC at 18 years old and I say, hey guys, look, I'm here. I'm ready to take you guys to a national championship. They're like, well, we have a whole bunch of other players who are better than you. So you, son, this is gonna be your position. You're going to stand there on the sideline. That's when I played tailback. See, I played linebacker on the field, but on the sideline, I played tailback. And you know what tailback is, right? Does anybody know what tailback is in football? It's when you're standing on the sideline, and the coach is like, hey, somebody get in the game. And I ran in, and the coach was like, son, get your tailback. I was like, oh, man, I still can't play. So I went the whole year, and I wasn't able to play the game of football, and my team won a national championship. See, I wear a ring, and I have six of them from college, but I wear one just as a reminder of what it takes to become great. What's the work that you put into it? Because so many times we think that it's just the result or the outcome that we want. We actually don't have to put in work. See, nothing happens fast unless you put it into a microwave. And success and greatness has nothing to do with a microwave. So the next year, my coach, Ken Norton Jr., right? So mentors, teachers, parents, this is for you. So my coach tells me, Thomas, what do you, what do you want to do after you graduate college? What do you want to do? I said, coach, I want to play professional football. He said, how many plays did you play last year? I said, uh, I didn't play any. He's like, well, how many do you want to play this year? I said, I want to play them all. But remember this, greatness begins with one step, not a whole bunch of steps. He said, so I need you to go from playing zero plays to one play. I said, coach, how do I do that? He said, I need you to play special teams. This is, this is the thing that he told me. He said, special people play special teams. Next one he said is, if you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do the things you've never done before in order to get them. And I'm like, coach, I want to play special teams. That's just one play. That's just one play of playing special teams. I'm just going to run down the field, make a tackle, and I'm going to run off the field, and the offense and the defense is going to come on the field. Why is this important? Because in media, in life, entrepreneurship, trying to go to college, graduating college, maybe you don't want to go to college, you want to start a business, you want to continue the legacy in your family, or you want to start a new legacy. If you want something you've never had, a college degree, those new shoes, that sweet shirt, in order to get the things you've never had before, you must be willing to do the things you've never done before in order to get them. So I said, okay, well, you know what? My coach played in the NFL. It's another thing. See, in life, we listen to people who have no 
experience in that we ask them a question, do you think I can do this? And they don't have any experience themselves and we give them all the power to take away our dreams. I was 17 years old and one of my best friends said, why do you think you can play college football? He tried to steal my dream. So my coach who played, he had the experience, he had everything, all of the validation, where he told me, he said, Thomas, I'm gonna help you get to the NFL. So I took him up on his advice, and the next year, I'm on special teams. Here's me running down on kickoff, one play. Do the things you have to do until you can do the things you wanna do. I had to play special teams because at the end of the day, I just wanted to play the whole entire game. I wanted to play the whole entire game. I wanted to be on the number one team in the country. And I did so well, they gave me this nickname on special teams. They said, here comes the hitman. They said, watch out, everybody. Here comes the hitman. Like, wow. So it works. So the next year, mm, here's another message I want to leave with you guys. People overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. I'm going to repeat that. People overestimate what they can do in one year. Bless you. But we underestimate what we can do in 10 years. I never thought in the course of my life that I would be playing for the number one team in the country. Just one year after I didn't have any type of playing experience. So I'm playing on the number one team in the country. We're undefeated. We win 38 straight football games. 38. Not one, not two, not three. 38 straight games. Everybody was trying to come take away what we wanted to do. We wanted to be great. There's going to be people in your life who are going to try and steal your dreams because they can't do it. So they're going to tell you that you can't do it only because they know or they feel that they can. So we had all these teams trying to come take our dream till we finally get to the end of the year playing in the national championship. We're playing against Vince Young and the Texas Longhorns. Now let me give you guys who don't know the score of the game, let me give you guys a little bit of an understanding. We win this game and we are three-time back-to-back-to-back national champions. It's never been done, ever. It's never been done. So there's two minutes to go in the football game. Fourth down and two yards to go. We have the ball. If we get two yards, six feet, if we get those six feet, we'll be three-time consecutive back-to-back-to-back national champions. How many yards do you think we got? Let me ask you a question. How many yards do you think we got on that fourth and two? I wish. We got one. She said two, I wish. We got one yard, so they take over, they get the ball, they go down and they score. And at the end of the game, this is Vince Young holding up the national championship trophy. The confetti's flying down on him. What do you do? What do you do when your dream is right there at your fingertips and it doesn't happen? Because we think that just because we have this vision or we have this dream or we have this thing that's inside of us that it's actually gonna just take place. Let me just close my eyes and wish for Santa Claus to just come down the trimdy. I wasn't a good boy this year, but you know what? Maybe he'll come if I wish. No, he's not coming. He's not coming. Not if I wasn't a good boy. So just because we have the dream and just because we have the desire to want to be a national champion in your field and do what you wanna do and be great in what you're saying that you want to accomplish, just because you gotta put in the work. How many of you guys wanna uh, win the lottery? Who would love to win the lottery? Everybody, everybody should have their hand up for this. But guess what? You can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket. You gotta buy the ticket in order to, to win the lottery. So I was upset, but I wasn't as mad because in this game against the Cal Berkeley Bears, who USC is actually playing today for the homecoming, two plays after this picture was taken, I dislocated my left knee and I laid on the ground and the coaches run over to me and they're like, Thomas, you gonna be okay? Yeah, coach, I'm gonna be all right. All of a sudden I'm looking down at my knee and my knee's over this direction and my leg's over this direction and I'm like, ah! But I had to be strong, right? You gotta wipe away your tears. So you wipe away your tears. And instead, and instead of, <laughs> instead of playing a national championship game, I had surgery. My dream is taken away from me. My dream was taken away from me and I was so close. It was like in such arm lengths. Put your arm out, let me touch it. That's how close it was, but we couldn't touch. We couldn't touch. And this is the thing about opportunities. 
just because we want them, just because we desire them, just because we wish that they're there, just because we have it in our brains that that's what we want, opportunities don't wait. They say it's a window of opportunities. And sometimes those windows close. But do you give up when they close? You can't give up. You can't give up. You can't give up. So I come back to my, again, mentors, coaches. I said, Coach Norton, that's his name. I said, you know what I want to do in life? Because I grew up without my father being in my life, so most of the coaches and teachers and the parents that I had around me were like my parents. So my coach told me, he said, Thomas, what are you going to do now that you're injured and you only have one year left? What are you going to do in your junior year? What are you going to do in your senior year? What are you going to do when you only have one more year before you're going to retire? What are you going to do? I said, Coach, I want to go to the NFL, but I'm scared. I'm scared to give it everything that I have because if I give something everything that I have inside of me as far as the energy, as far as my focus, if I give it everything that I got and I, and I don't have an opportunity to see that dream become a reality, what did I do? What did I do? I wasted my time. I wasted my energy. What if you give every single thing that you have to something and it doesn't happen? And I'm like, oh my gosh, if I give everything that I possibly can to this person, to this job, to anything that I'm trying to accomplish and anything that I want to accomplish and gain from my gratitude, then I've wasted my time. He said, Thomas, look, I need you to understand this thing. You need to understand this thing. If you give every single thing that you have to your dreams, if you want to be in the media, be in the media. If you want to be in front of the camera, be in front of the camera. If you want to be behind the camera, if you want to be social media, if you want to be marketing, if you want to be PR, whatever you want to do, Give it everything that you have. Because if you give it everything that you have and it still doesn't accept you, just like my coach told me on this day, then maybe that opportunity didn't deserve you. Maybe that opportunity didn't deserve you. So I go, coach, oh, I'm playing football. I'm playing great because he just freed me and cleared me of my greatness. And I get invited to the NFL combine. Anybody know what a job interview is? Raise your hand. Job interview. We're gonna go over job interviews today. We're gonna to go over internships. We're gonna go over resume writing. So I get invited to the NFL Combine. NFL Combine's the biggest. Matter of fact, I gotta get up here and tell you how big this thing is. It's the biggest job interview in the entire world for athletes who wanna play professional football. So I go to the Combine. Look, you see me, I'm getting ready to catch a ball. I'm, I'm focused, I'm focused. I got my eyes. I got my eyes locked in. I'm running fast. I got my muscles ready to go. This is the job interview. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to look at the numbers because this is a comparison. This is the comparison. When you go into a job interview, they're either going to look at you and your resume and your body of work, and they're going to look at somebody else. If there's two people and there's only one spot, what's going to separate you? So just by looking at the numbers, the best was a 4.46. I ran a 4.9. Ooh, that's slow. I did 27 bench reps, that's all right. That's what, that's what the best did that year. Vertical jump, that's when you stand right here and you jump as high as you can. Ooh, man, that was a bad day. The next one, you broad jump 10 feet, eight inches. That was what the best did. I only got to nine. But do you give up? Do you give up when you're that close? When you're that close, do you give up? No, I can't hear you in the back. When you're that close, do you give up? Oh, yes. So six weeks later, six weeks later, I worked out every single day. I got up. I did my push-ups. I was eating all the right food. I said, you know what? Just because this thing in this moment tried to stop me, it's not going to stop me because it was, it was whose goal, whose dream? It was mine. So nothing's going to stop me in my dream and my goal. So six weeks, I'm out there running, and I'm working out. This is why we got to understand that in order for the plan to work, we got to work it. You got to work the plan. In order for the plan to work, you got to work it. So I'm working the plan. Six weeks later, let me show you. That's me at Pro Day. 446, I ran a 49. And look at me at Pro Day. I ran a 462. I got better. Are you serious? I got better. Just because I worked, I got better. The same thing with the bench press. Now you got to look at the vertical jump. Remember? Remember I just jumped like this high the first time? The next time I jumped because I gave it everything that I had and I got better only because of the work. It was the work. 
it wasn't anything that I put in my mind and I just closed my eyes and I just snapped my fingers and I was like, all right, I just want to wish it to happen. No, you got to will it to happen. So I willed it to happen and look at the broad jump. That's when you stand right here and you jump out as far as you can. The first time I did nine feet. It's not bad, but it's not good. Next time I did 10. So I get drafted. I get drafted. Draft day's coming up. I get drafted, 155th pick overall. 155th pick overall, are you serious? There's only like 200 and something slots. And there's 100,000 of people who play college football and high school football, and I get drafted, me. They picked little old me from Vacaville. What? Are you serious? Ever since I was seven years old and I had this dream to become a professional athlete, and then it comes, it happens. And everybody, this is why I love it. I'm seeing all everybody's pencils and everybody's pieces of paper. This is probably the most important part of my talk right here. I need you guys to hear me and I need you guys to take this part serious because people forget but paper remembers. People forget but paper remembers. Write it down, write it down. Write it down, write it down, write it down, write it down. I wanna show you something funny. Let me show you. So when I was 18 years old, we had this assignment. When I was my senior year in high school and the teacher said in five years, so by the time you're 23 years old, where do you see yourself? So I want you guys to think about it. Don't do it now, but do it later. But where do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? Let's just say, I don't know, in, in, in six months, in a year, in five years, whatever it is. But she said in five years, where do you see yourself? I said, you know what? I see myself playing for the Miami Dolphins. Now I'm 18 years old at the time. I see myself playing for the Miami Dolphins. I wear number 51. I'm driving a Mercedes Benz, right? You gotta get the nice car with it too. I live in an apartment, high rise. I got season tickets to the Miami Heat. I had it all, all envisioned in my mind and I'm writing it down. I said I was gonna make $222,000. I'm gonna play for the Miami Dolphins. Exactly five years later to the day, I got drafted by the Jacksonville Jaguars and made $295,000. I wore number 53 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now I was off a couple of miles and I was off a little bit of money. But the thing about it is I want you guys to think about what is it that you wanna do and I want you to be bold and brave enough and courageous enough to write it down because it was scary when I was sitting there in class and I was presenting just like I'm presenting today and I'm looking at everybody in the class and I'm telling them exactly what I told you. I'm gonna play for the Miami Dolphins, I'm gonna wear number 51, I'm gonna make this much money, I'm gonna drive this car. And I felt great about myself. I was like, woo, I'm excited. Anybody have questions? Somebody raised their hand, they're like, what color is your car gonna be? And I was like, I'm gonna get a red car. They were like, so, What's the first thing you're gonna buy? And I was like, I'm a professional sleeper, so I'm like, I'm gonna buy me a bed. It's the first thing I'm gonna buy. The third person raised their hand and they're like, so Thomas, I have a question for you. What are you gonna do when it doesn't happen? I was like, oh, I never thought of that. So for a second, I just kind of took a minute and because I didn't want to get mad because it hurt me so bad that somebody could think that it wouldn't happen. How can you think that it's not going to happen? And I took a moment. And I said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. If my dream doesn't come true, that you're going to do. And her dream was to be a veterinarian. Five years later, I can say that I was the only person who actually saw the dream become a reality. I became a professional athlete. The same professional athlete that I wrote down, that I dreamt about, that I tried to pursue, and every single day I put in work pursuing. She didn't become that veterinarian. To be honest, I don't know what she became. But let me ask you guys this. Do you guys think, do you, does anybody know if it would have happened if I wouldn't have wrote it down? Is anybody for sure? Maybe it happened, maybe not. You know the cool thing about it? We'll never have to find out. 
we don't ever have to find out. So you got to write your dreams. Now I just want to give you guys a quick little review of what we talked about. When in doubt, got to keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Why? I've only had one job in my entire life, and I was 17 years old, and I worked at a Christmas tree lot. And I got fired. <laughs> I know, true story, I got fired. But I've been getting paid ever since I was 18 years old, and I've never had a job. Why is that? Because your passion will lead you into your purpose. Can't give up. Next one, success. It's not a straight line. We don't think that we start here today and we end up there tomorrow. It's going to take work. You know how long it took for me to turn 33? It took me 33 years. You don't just land there. Next one, be careful who you listen to. Remember I talked about my coach. I talked about my mentor. The reason why I listened to him so much is because he played in the NFL. He was a football player. Don't allow somebody who can't do what you want to do influence you. If they haven't done it, hey, don't be rude to them. But at the same time, you don't have to listen to them. Just because they can't do something doesn't mean you won't. I'll tell you a story. In 2010, I was in South Africa at the, uh, at the World Cup. And I remember going out and playing soccer the day that we were getting ready to leave. And it was awesome. We donated some, some soccer balls, some cleats, and some jerseys. And some of the kids that we were playing with were like, how, wh when, when do you go home? And I said, we'll go home tonight. And he goes, well, how long is it going to take? And I was like, you know, 16, 17 hours. And they said, well, how? I said, well, you know, we're going to get on an airplane. We're going to fly from Johannesburg all the way back to Los Angeles. And they said, a what? I said, an airplane. They said, you mean those are real? I said, yeah, they're real. But see, to them, it wasn't real because they've never experienced it. To me, it was real because I've already been on one. The same thing about the people that you listen to in your life, have they done it? We got too many people leading that aren't in a position to be able to lead. We have too many people who have an opportunity to influence the youth, and they're not influencing the youth in the right way. Parents, the words that you say will be taken literally by your children. You know this. Exchange the apostrophe T's and say you can, not can't. Don't exchange that. Last one, there's no guarantees if you try. There's only guarantees if you quit. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. I'm going to repeat that because maybe you guys didn't understand that on this side. I'm going to say it again. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And the last one, write your goals. Write them down. Write them down. Now I want to leave you guys with a little, one, last, one last message. Because in life, our expectations of the level of success that we can acquire or accomplish is based off of the exposure that we have. You guys are here today because there's a whole bunch of phenomenal, great professionals in the industry of media. And that's what we're getting exposed to today. We're going to learn how to write. We're going to learn how to talk. We're going to learn how to interview. We're going to learn. I want you guys, instead of, because sometimes when we go to these conferences or sometimes when we sit in a room and somebody's talking, we're like, dang it, they said so much, I don't remember what they said. So I want you guys to do me a favor. From each speaker that you guys listen to today, pick two things that they said. Don't take everything, just take two things that they said. And by the time you leave here today, those are the things that you're gonna work on moving forward. Because I've had a dream when I was seven years old and it became a reality 15 years later. 15 years it took for me to get to the top of the mountain, of my mountain. But today, you guys have to all identify and define what your mountaintop is. And I'll leave you with one last thing, and then we'll go jump right into the q and Is any gardeners? Any gardeners? Anybody have nice gardens in the, in, the, in the room? Raise your hands. You got nice gardens? It's all right. Yeah, she's like, it's all right. It's all right. So some of you guys may know there's this, uh, there's this plant, and it's super special. It's called the, uh, the bamboo tree. Somebody said, he said, oh my gosh. 
So the bamboo tree, so you plant, right? So I don't know if anybody has one. I, did, I just found out about it. So the thing about it is that you plant this seed and you put it in the ground and every single day that you water it and you nourish it. You water it and you nourish it. And every single day you got to give the same amount of water, the same amount of attention, the same amount of focus. Every single day. You give it one day, you give it the next day, you give it one day, you give it the next day. Nothing happens after the first year. Nothing. You're like, what? I came out here for every single day, put some water on it, put some dirt on it, raked it, nothing happened? You do it again every single day for the second year. And at the second year, you're like, all right, it's, something's got to happen this time. Nothing happened. You do it every single day for the third year. And the same thing, nothing happens. You're like, you know what, man, I give up. I can't figure this out. But only the ones who are bold enough to do it again for the fourth year. Only the ones who are bold enough to do it for the fourth year actually see some type of results. Because in that fourth year, the tree goes 60 to 90 feet. So my question to you guys today, did the tree grow in the first three years or did it grow in the last year? Ah, not so fast. Every year. The tree grew because of the work that you put in every single year. Even when you don't see results, even when you don't see things coming to fruition, even when you don't see things happening your way, you can't give up. The reason why I'm able to stand here today before you guys is because I had great mentors and coaches and people who cheered me on. There's two types of people in your life, ones that tell you you can do something and ones who tell you you can't. And life is not about proving the people who tell you you can't do wrong. Life's about telling the teachers, the coaches, the administrations, you got to prove them right. So I want you guys to think about it. Be the bamboo tree, and every single day work on your dream. That is my time. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you, and good luck, good luck, good luck. Actually, I think we have a couple of minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am, my favorite part. Um, how old are you now? How old are you, am I now? How old do you think I am? Uh, 33. 33, you're right, 33, double threes. Yes. Why did you want the number 51? Why did I want the number 51? Because something else that I didn't say in that. I used to watch Ken Norton Jr., who actually was my coach when he played for the San Francisco 49ers, and he wore number 51. So that's why I wanted number 51. Great question. Yes. Yes, in the back. Yes, sir. Where, where's your favorite place to go? Where's my favorite place to go? Australia. Great question. Right behind you. Oh, good question. So when I got injured and I, got, I retired in 2012, I said I wanted to inspire the world, impact people, and be the one that everybody talked to before they got ready to do something they didn't even believe they can do. So my job and current occupation is I'm an author of two books. I'm a public speaker and an adjunct professor at USC. Good question. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. The hardest running back ever played against was at practice every single day um, when I was at USC going against guys like Reggie Bush. Yes, sir. What was your favorite football team that you played for? My favorite football team that I played for, do I have to pick one? Can I, can I say it was the college team? Yeah. All right, it was the college team. We won two national championships. Yes, sir. How do you get in the USC? How do you get in? You can get in by academics, which was not gonna be super simple for me, um, or th through grants, um, scholarships, and athletics for me, but grants and, and scholarships and other things like that. Good question. Yes, you too? Um, I, think my, I think my coaching field is a little bit different now. Like, instead of just coaching athletes, I'm able to coach people. And that was one thing my mom always taught me growing up. She said, doesn't matter how successful you become, how much money that you ever get, 
She said, never, never forget it's all about the impact that you have on mankind. Yes. Which team would I like to play for? Which team would I like to play for? Um. Uh, center High Cougars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ooh, would I give up my dream to pursue another dream? It's a great question. I think our dreams lead us to dreams. So for me, it wasn't about becoming an NFL football player, but it was about becoming the person that I'm ultimately created to be. Because it's not about in life what you get when you, get your, you achieve your accomplishments. It wasn't the cars, the money, the houses, anything that I could, I can, I can throw it away, I can lose it, whatever, I can get another one. But it's ultimately about who you become in pursuit of that. So I learned through all of those tough times, I learned what is it like not to quit. But now it's led me into this dream. But if I would have quit on that first dream, I wouldn't be sitting here and living this dream. Great question. Yes, sir, last one. Yes, Major League Baseball. And I should have stuck with it because you know how much money they're getting? That's what I should have stayed with, right? All right, thank you guys so, so much. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you for this.